okay so today we're going to do some uh, uh, look back at uh, lists so let's just quickly recap what we learned all right uh, list uh, remember uh, we say some elements right one two three four right and then uh, we can uh, we can index into the list by some index starting at zero so if you want to get the values uh, we say we say like this right right and so on and so forth um, and if you want to assign some value we can just say mm, the same way as access, uh, accessing but we say um, we put the equal sign the assignment and on the right we put the new value and that gets assigned so we want to check, change the element at position one we do that okay and for iterating we say for um, say i in l1 we can iterate through the list right we already we already know this so i just want to uh, and um, uh, so the in terms of types uh, the type of variables we've learned or data types uh, we learned about uh, integer integers which is a uh, number right number types uh, integer and float and then we learned about boolean and then for uh, like um, uh, and we learned about tuples right it can it contains uh, other values similar to list the only difference between list and a tuple is that once you create a tuple you cannot modify it so those are called immutable and in fact all the very all the types that we have looked up until up to uh, list there so anything be, anything other than the list is called the immutable uh, types so you cannot once you create it you cannot change the contents of it right that doesn't mean that um, so, uh, so let's say if I have a equal one um, so one itself that's what I mean one itself cannot be changed right but I can change a a is just a uh, pointer okay that is that is not what i meant by immutability so the one itself cannot be changed whereas if you have a list right uh, for sure we can change the list content like say for example we want to change the first element i can put uh, right so the content of that uh, list is actually changing that's what it's mean by mutable and immutable Okay, similar to the tuple, if I have a tuple, I can index into it, right? But I cannot change it. If I say t0 equal to 10, this will, this will say tuple object does not support item assignment. So meaning it cannot be changed. Okay, so those are the, that's the difference. Okay, so another thing is the string. Uh, it turns out that string is very similar to a list except that is immutable so kind of you can think of a string as uh, as a tuple containing many uh, items in it so the items are actually the individual characters of the string so to better uh, uh, explain let's say I have a string okay so um, Similar to the list, I can do s one zero. This will give me the the first character. Okay. Similarly, I can say uh, the minus one. That will give me the last. Uh, oh, minus one. What am I? S one. Sorry. It's s one. Yeah. So if I say s one, it will give me the um, the last character right and similarly I can do similar to in um, list I can do also the slicing uh, you guys remember the slicing well oh, why am I keep typing as well okay 
similar to the list you can do uh, slicing on this so if I say 0 to 2 it will give me a G okay and if I say 2 to the end it will give me everything right slicing so string works similar to um, uh, the lists okay uh, but you cannot assign anything to it okay so if I say if I want to change the first character to E I can't do that because it's it doesn't support item assignment so similar to the tuple it's immutable okay um, similar to uh, list we can iterate over the uh, string say for example So each, uh, so basically, for every iteration, it gives me the characters. You can think of like characters, but they are actually strings themselves. But basically, it'll give me uh, the individual, uh, individual items in the in the in the string. Okay. So it's it's they are called sequence types uh, in in Python. So they support this iteration and uh, accessing by index. But they are immutable. Okay. Mm. And similar to uh, list, uh, they have they have uh, member. Uh, they are they basically object that you can call uh, methods on it. Say for example, I can call this capitalize method. Okay. Or s one dot sorry. Okay. There are many methods in it. Um, in string, so. Uh, so capitalize what it does is it takes the first character and, and, and makes it a capital letter. Okay, that's what capitalize does. But there are many methods in it as you can see. Okay. So so for example, similar to actually similar to a list, you can also get the length of a string too. Okay. Because it is hello has five characters in it. One, two, three, four, five. So there are basically five items in that. Okay. So strings are kind of special. They behave like a uh, list, but they are also like a, uh, uh, like a, like the number of variables that we looked at. Like, like, like we have been using it like that all this time, right? Some uh, interesting aspects. Let's say, for example, if I have um hello and another string called word uh, i can concatenate these two together remember in uh, when we print out we we say one string plus another string to to print it right um, so this actually what it does it, it it concatenates those two things together to create a new list or a new string okay so, so since string is not uh, mutable it's immutable so when we when we um, concatenate using the plus operator it gives you a new string okay where the s1 and s2 are unchanged okay this 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 just gives me a new string similarly um, similar so we were able to do the well, if we had two lists we, we could have used the plus to create a new list remember so if I have less one, and if I had list two, I was able to create a new list by this, right? Similarly, okay. So strings are very much like list. Um, another thing is, um, I can I can. So we had s one and s two. Um, I can if I want to change. Um, like I'm not when I say th this plus equal remember the plus equal whenever we have a variable we increment something uh, so I can do similar to this what this does is actually remember this s1 is a label right you can think of it as a label so this label e plus equal to another thing so hello so what will what this will do is 
S1 will be assigned a new string of S1 plus S2. Okay, so now if you look at it, okay, so that, that doesn't uh, violate the principle of immut uh, immutability. Okay, it just means that we just assign the new string to S1. Okay, okay, so this is how you concatenate uh, uh, and assign it to S1, like, like. So, but but this this type of uh, concatenation in string is not really recommended. So the recommended approach is that uh, if you if you have a, if you have a list of strings like S1 and S2, if you want to concatenate, what you have to do is you create a new string, okay, and you say join, and then you give it a list. Okay. Sorry, S1 was, I already changed, so let me just do that again. So if I have hello, and S2 is world, I can join them using the empty character, empty string. And I just have to pass it as uh, an array, or sorry, list, okay? So this gives me a, a new string. So it's it's very much like this. But this is the preferred way of doing it in Python. The reason is it's every time you do a plus equal, remember its strings are immutable. So what happens is that in uh, behind the scenes, Python creates an every time you do this plus equal, it creates new strings and it, it ends up creating many strings and it hogs up the memory. So that's why this is not recommended when you want to concatenate two strings. The preferred method is this. Okay, and it's not limited to just um, just empty empty string you can use um, whatever string you want let's say I want to join it with with a space right so now this will give me hello world with a space in it okay and if let's say if I wanted to join with some some other character or another string let's say I want to join it with uh, dash 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 okay and this will do that and it's not limited to um, just two two items. It can be many items. Okay, so let's say I have s2 s2 s1 s2 So I have four item four items in the list now that will give me this Okay, that's the preferred way of joining a string Clear Yeah all right, so let's just do this. So what is the opposite of uh, joining? So if I have a string like this, right? Hello world, hello world. And let me assign it to a variable, say h, okay? So now what if, what if I want to go from, uh, so h is right now, h is a string, right? So what if I want to go from, so I, I passed the uh, list of arrays. What if I want to go from, a string back to a list of arrays I can do uh, the opposite so I can do h dot split and I give it a character that I want to split on so what this will do is it will split my h string which is hello dash word dash and I want to split it on this dash and it will give me h dot split will give me an, a, a list with all the elements separated by this dash so hello world hello world okay that's the opposite of join of course there are many methods in it in in string but for now uh, this is all you need to know okay you can do a lot with just these okay so now we're now um, any actually any questions on this? All right, um, let's go to let's introduce a new uh, type. Okay, so far we learned all the types, including list and uh, tuple, string, boolean, int, float. Right. So let's learn about another type called dictionary. Okay. This is a uh, this is another type. It's very handy. Actually, you will use it all the time. Okay. In fact, 
you might be tempted to use this in our next assignment okay so what is a dictionary so going back to our uh, list let's say we have elements right we index them using an integer right so whatever we put inside the square bracket is an integer so the position is determined by an index right so it starts at 0 1 2 3 right we know that right everybody knows that we know so this what a, this uh, new type called dictionary is kind of like a list except that we can index it based on uh, any immutable object so immutable object is numbers strings right and tuples so we can use any of those to index so let's give let me just give you an example so these are called dictionaries i'm going to say dictionary one and uh, for list when we create a list we use the square brackets but for dictionary we use these curly bracket curly braces okay and and then when we specify the elements the dictionary elements are are always a pair okay um, so remember i said um, the index is zero right here you specify the index sort of okay it's called the key okay so and i can specify it like this let's say um, john and i want to so it's always two things so key specify uh, colon separator we have to use a colon and then the value let's say i want to represent people and their ages okay so john 18 okay that's one element that's how we de de define an element okay and let's say bob okay and kevin i don't know i'm just making it up okay so that's how we specify the elements in a dictionary okay so if you look at it dictionary looks like that so so we cannot we cannot access uh, uh, the elements by uh, indexes anymore okay we have to access these elements by their keys okay so in order to access let's say bob i can say the bob i can put in bob like the string bob and it'll give me back the value okay so this is called a dictionary in other programming languages it's also called a map okay so let's visualize this thing sorry so in a list say we think of this list like this we have elements let's say five four three two whatever right i'm just making integers as list items um, and they're indexed by this integer that starts with zero all the way to the length of the list minus one right we know this so zero points to five one points to four two points to three three points to two so on and so forth right and in, or, in order to access it, let's say this is called L1. This is pointing here. So in order to access it, we use L1 bracket some index, right? Zero, right? And then this will give me back the zeroth element, which is five. So dictionary is very similar to this. except so this is in fact a curly brace okay so um it'll be like this key right john and we said whatever okay this is colon okay so so th 
this is how they are um, indexed so here the indexes are numbers here the indexes is whatever you give it so in order to access bob value i can just use let's just say this is dictionary one i would say d1 and i just give the key the bob okay this will give me the value okay that's the difference okay so um, if I want to add something to it um, so similar to list if I if I can do list dot append right here if I want to add something to it um, let me see Just go back to a Python. So I have a dictionary here. I have all the elements similar to the um, similar to um, uh, the list, right? So if you want to add something to it, remember in list we did append, right? So here all we have to do is use a new key. Let's say I have a new person. Okay. Uh, what is it? Let's say Vaishnav. Okay. And I can I can simply say simply put the new key and give it the value. Okay. So now if I look at my dictionary, it has the new element that I pushed in. Okay. So we don't do append, we just we just uh, we just index into it and assign it okay uh, but okay so this is the index this is the index it's called the it's, all, it's called the key in dic uh, dictionary okay and this is the corresponding value uh, you guys see that now like does it make sense so can you think of where you might end up using this uh, instead of a list? Like, if you look at all the previous uh, assignments that you have done, is there any place that you could have used this list or list this dictionary to do your uh, solutions? Maybe the tic tac toe. Yeah. Okay, that's something to consider. Okay, so so basically, anytime uh, that you have a list of keys and you want to refer to the value, you can use this dictionary. For example, another example I can give you is, let's say I have a country capital. Okay, let's say I want to find out all the I want to store all the country. Uh, and their capitals okay so Canada I can say Ottawa and USA you can say what is it District of Columbia I don't know Alavax I think Wait, no. Washington DC Washington DC Washington <laughs> okay and and uh, I don't know give me another country and a uh, France and Paris. Okay, so France is Paris. India and Chennai. Chennai or Delhi, I think. Okay, anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, so if we have a country capital, like right? let's say I have a variable called country capital, I can store all the uh, um, the, the countries and their capital. And if I want to find out for any country capital, I can just simply say country capital. I can pass in the key which is the country let's say if I want to find out for France this will right away give me uh, the uh, the value associated with that key right give me key so this is so if you had to do do this in a, in a list um, how, how can you do this It's much more harder right so you probably would create a, um, a list of tuples like this right but you can have a tuple and then you will iterate over the list and see 
if the tuples first element is the country uh, and then you will return that right so you would have to go through the entire list to find out uh, the key in order to find out the the value right so this 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 ma uh, this dictionary uh, you you don't have to do that you, it'll 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 give you like instant access basically okay so you don't have to search through all the elements of the list right do you see that okay so that's the advantage of this dictionary okay um, so most of the time you will just assign values and retrieve values okay that's what is used for um, you can also delete an entry say for example if I want to delete USA I can use the del keyword remember the del keyword you can use del keyword in in a list too so I can just say delete this entry now uh, my map uh, or dictionary uh, that entry for USA is gone okay that's how you delete entries um, and if you want to iterate through uh, all the list items you can do so but the order of how we how it shows up here it's not guaranteed okay the order is not guaranteed in list whereas uh, sorry in, in dictionary in list the order is guaranteed right because here the indexes are just a bunch of names it's not like uh, in list where you had like 0 1 2 3 the order of how you get them out if you iterate through them it's not guaranteed so for example what I mean by this is if I say for I in um, country capital if I say print I what I get is these are the basically I'll get the only the keys okay I'll just get the keys if I iterate um, in, in dictionary okay if I want to get the value I can just do how do we get the value right we just use that why is this I don't know something on here let's just do it in here and uh, so if I have a um, countries country dictionary say for key in country dictionary I can just say key and add key okay, let's run this so it'll give me the key and the value right we just use the key to index into the dictionary to get the value Okay, so that's how we get the key and the value when we iterate over the dictionary. Um, there's also another one called items method on the dictionary. What this will give you is key and a value as a tuple and then we can use the tuple unpacking. Remember tuple unpacking? We can use, uh, so this country dictionary items gives you a list of tuples that there are key and values and then we use this tuple unpacking unpacking syntax to get the key and value right away so we don't have to index into it so we get the same result okay that's another way of uh, iterating through all the keys and values um, 
So another thing is uh, with the dictionary similar to a uh, list if we index into something that doesn't exist say for example if I say country dictionary if I want to access into say um, I don't know Brazil since Brazil doesn't exist this will throw me an error okay it says key error Brazil so if we if we use some if we, if we try to index into something that doesn't exist in that list in, in that in the dictionary it'll give me an error okay you know so if we want to avoid this we can just do this saying like if Brazil the key in country dictionary okay so I actually this is this this in will give me a boolean actually so here it will return me um, sorry if I print this the value of that is a boolean okay so we can use this in our if law if, if, if statement or whatever right in any area that we want to uh, check uh, or do boolean comparison we can do so like this so we can say Okay. Oh, not in. Sorry. <laughs> so opposite is not in. Okay. We can use that. If I say Canada, this will return me true. So I can say. something like this okay so that's how you check if something is in the dictionary if you are not sure if you want to check it because otherwise if you try to access it it will throw you an error key error okay so that's what the dictionary I think that's all you need to know for now about dictionaries okay so Let's recap. Uh, can you can somebody tell me what's the difference between a list and a dictionary? A list you uh, index with numbers, and a dictionary you index with string. Yeah, or more um, to be more exact, it's anything immutable. Okay, you can even you can even use a a, a number to index into it. So, for example. Um, Say, say if I want to represent uh, the number and their uh, English representation say okay so I would say num I don't know I don't know what the so if I wanted to do this if I say one is spelt as one two is sorry I need a colon key value So if I wanted to find out what the English representation of something, I can just say num dictionary and I pass in that index. So what will this print me? It will print me, basically it gets me, based on the key, it gets me the value. Okay. So the key is not, it doesn't have to be just uh, strings. It could be anything immutable. I would never be able to use a list in here because that's a mutable object. Okay, so only only immutable objects can be keys, but the values can be anything. Values can be mutable or immutable. Okay, I can I can I can refer one to a um, array or or a list you know a list of numbers. Depends on what the program what you're trying to do. Okay, so it's very generic uh, like similar to list list can have other list as items right similarly um, dictionary you can have uh, the values can be uh, pretty much anything it can even be another dictionary or it could be a list or whatever you, you know it's it's up to you what you're trying to do for that particular case does that make sense all right so Mm, I think that's it for today okay so 
I just want to go over um, next or this week's assignment. So this week assignment is kind of, I think it's pretty interesting. Um, let me just take this out so I can see you guys. We're going to be doing uh, something called, uh, it has to do with encryption and decryption okay or encoding and decoding so if you want to if you have a message that you want to send it to somebody and then you don't want to you don't want other people to know what it is what do you do you 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 encrypt it okay so this this is a this is a very interesting uh, encryption or cipher it's developed by this guy Viginario. I don't know exactly how to say but it's a cipher so if you go down here um, it tells you how it works so basically you go and read about this uh, okay that's your assignment this tonight so you go and read about this guy this algorithm actually this cipher um, so let's say you have a string call here it says attack at dawn right and you want to pass this message to your soldiers in the front line Okay, but you don't want the courier to know what this message is. So it's this plain text is actually encrypted using this key to create this cipher text. So if you look at the cipher text, you don't know what the heck it means, right? What was the original text is? Can you guys see it? Make mm, this bigger. okay so your program that you will be writing is to given a text and a key you will be creating this uh, encrypted message and then just creating an encrypted message is not good enough we need to given an encrypted message we need to go back and find out what the plain text is based on the key okay so this here tells you how it's done and I'm, I'm gonna I'm going to write it out more uh, more descriptively so your your program your your next assignment is to create this okay it's not as complicated as the tic tac toe you might think oh why is it seems more complicated but it is ha it has to do with the lists and creating a dictionary also might be helpful for you okay so read about this just you just need to read about this this section here okay that's all you need to read about. There's another like mathematical syntax, all this stuff. Don't worry about that. Okay. Just go into uh, this description here and look at this, right? Our familiar list of list, right? Whenever you have a 2D matrix like this, it's a list of list. Okay. It's similar to our tic-tac-toe, but we are stepping it up to a much higher dimension length wise okay but it is easier this assignment it's just that you just need to focus a lot okay you can get uh, get lost very easily so I need you guys to focus okay that's what this assignment is going to be about all right but it'll be fun so imagine you write this program and you want to send some message to your friend all you have to do is you have to tell the friend what your key is and then you just pass your encrypted message in your chat and nobody will be able to know only the person who has the key would be able to decrypt it back to what the original message is okay does it sound interesting <laughs> you guys are like no we're not doing this <laughs> are we but it is fun you will find out it's actually not as hard as you think similar to how tic-tac-toe goes when you started out it was like it's very challenging right i know for some of you but you were able to do it okay same with this <laughs> okay all right that's it for now. any questions all right bye guys bye i have a question
Bye. Bye. No!